my life down at your feet You're the only one I need I turn to you and you are always there In troubled times it's you I see I put you first, that's all I need I humble all I am, all to you That as you travel along the road and you see these signs that we have been talking about week after week, that indeed they are bringing to your mind the biblical truths that we've been talking about. I asked some of the kiddos who were with me on Sunday morning if that was happening to them, and they said, indeed it was. So I hope it's happening to you too. I hope that when you see a one-way sign, that you right away think, aha, there is only one way to heaven. Jesus is the one way to heaven. And then each time you stop at a stop sign, I hope you're reminded that you can stop sin in its tracks. When you come to a yield sign along the highway, it should bring to your mind the truth that in when we have placed our faith in Jesus as Savior and Lord, we are given the gift of the Holy Spirit. And as followers of Jesus, we must be willing to yield and take directions from that Spirit. 
the merge sign on the road guides drivers to come together into one lane. In the same way, Jesus followers must be humble, put others first, and work in harmony, merging together to help tell others about Jesus. We added the construction zone sign to our study, and we learned that we should be continually working on our relationship with Jesus. We grow in our faith when we enter God's construction zone. Last week, we looked at a story in the Bible about when David's life, King David, King of Israel, his life took a serious detour. This was our sign for the week, and we learned that not just for King David, but for all of us, life can bring us detours. And when we have detours in our life, we can trust God, remember his faithfulness in the past, and ask for his help time and time again. Today, we're again going to look into the book of 1 Samuel to examine an event in the life of David. This event happened before he was king of Israel. This was during a time when in King in David's life when King Saul was chasing him down, seeking to kill David out of jealousy. Watch this. The miracle of mercy. David and Saul. This is David. Hey. David was a shepherd who lived in Israel. David was chosen by God to be the next king of Israel when he was just a boy. But David had to wait a very long time until that promise would come true because there was another king of Israel named Saul. Saul was strong and tall and looked like everything a king should be. But Saul did not follow God like he was supposed to. And for that reason, God chose to take the kingdom from Saul's family and give it to David's. David became a great warrior. Ah! And everyone in the kingdom loved David. Huh? This made Saul jealous and Saul hated David because he thought he would try to kill him and take the throne from his family. So Saul wanted to kill David. Whoa! Saul hunted David, but he couldn't catch him. One day, Saul heard that David was in the wilderness of En Gedi. So Saul gathered 3,000 of his skilled fighters and went to find and kill David. During Saul's search for David, he went in a cave to relieve himself. Well, this very cave was the one where David and his men were hiding. And when David's men saw that Saul was unaware that David was there and unable to defend himself, they said, Now's your chance, David. This is God telling you that he will give you your enemy to do with as you wish. So David crept forward and cut off a piece of Saul's robe. But then David began to think that it was not right for him to take Saul's life. For no matter how much hardship and difficulty Saul had caused him, it was still not right for him to hurt the one who God had placed over Israel. So David told his men to back off, and he did not let them kill King Saul. They waited until after Saul had left the cave, and then David ran out of the cave and shouted after Saul, My king, why do you listen to people who say I am trying to harm you? Look, I cut it off, but I didn't kill you. This proves that I am not trying to harm you and that I have not sinned against you, even though you've been hunting me. David went on to promise that he would never harm Saul. David said that God would be the one to protect David and to rescue him from Saul's power. 
Saul said, Is that really you, David? And he began to cry. Saul said, You are a better man than I. You have been amazingly kind to me today, for when God put me in a place where you could have killed me, you didn't do it. Who else would have done this? And now I realize that you are surely going to be king, and the kingdom of Israel will flourish under your rule. But promise me that when that happens, you will not kill my family. So David promised that he would not hurt Saul's family, and they left each other in peace. Now Saul continued to cause difficulty in David's life. But David kept his promise, and in time, David did become king of Israel. David was dearly loved by God, and Israel did flourish under his rule because David did everything that God wanted him to do, and he was a man after God's own heart. If you haven't realized already, you will. Making the right decision can be hard, and it is especially hard if everyone around you is telling you what they think is the right thing to do. So what are you to do when you have a tough choice to make? I'm going to suggest that you ask yourself four questions. First, what does the Bible say about this? If we ask around, we may have people making all kinds of suggestions about what is right and what is wrong. But God in his word will never get it wrong. When you don't know which way to go, the first thing you need to do is check out what the Bible says. The second question to ask yourself is, have I prayed about this? Sometimes the Bible doesn't specifically give us an answer to the decision we need to make. So when the Bible doesn't give you a specific direction, you should pray. Ask God to help you with that decision. The third question to ask yourself, what do wise people have to say about it? Once you have looked at your Bible, you've been praying about this decision, then go to the wise people that God has put in your life, your pastor, your parents, your Sunday school teachers. God has put these people in your life to help you. And finally, the fourth question, do I have a peace about this decision? Once you are ready to make your decision, again, if you have checked your Bible, you have been praying about it faithfully, and you have asked the wise people in your life about it, then you should have a peace about the, your next step. You should be able to have a strong sense of God's direction in your decision. As a Jesus follower, God's spirit will guide your spirit. So back to the story of David. There he was with an opportunity to make his life easier. He had King Saul right where he could take him out for good. It looked like the perfect opportunity. But David turned to his men and said, The Lord forbid it that I would do such a thing. He, meaning Saul, is the anointed of God. I will not lift my hand against him. David knew that if he had followed his way instead of God's way, he would have ended up becoming king at the wrong time for the wrong reasons. Our sign for today, the wrong way sign. Like David, we want to trust God and follow God's way instead of our way and other people's way. We want to make sure we're going the right way, not the wrong way.
Let me pray with you. Dear Heavenly Father, our great God and King, the one who knows all things, the one who is all wise, we come to you and we acknowledge we know there are lots of decisions to make. And that means we have lots of choices and we on our own can't get it right every time. And so we put our trust in you. We ask for your help in leading us in the right way every time, Lord, and we'll give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. He knows each stitch, each coat of oil, he's put it to the test. So if he tells you how to sit and move the stirrup so, be sure you do as you're told, then giddy up and go!